Hello, folks, and welcome back to the program. Welcome to the 50th episode of this program. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully, you watched to the end of the video. And I really would appreciate it today because we are giving some love and admiration to the Nico STA 7070 AM FM stereo receiver. A constant staple and a good old friend that I've had since the beginning of this channel, uh, 2020 of last year. I think I started in April, and these videos you guys seem to like the most. This episode, as well as every other episode, is sponsored and brought to you by Manza Illustrations. Uh, Manza Illustrations is my personal uh, business where I bring you guys art uh, in forms of commission pieces, gifts, my Etsy shop you can support. Uh, you can give food to these little doggies here by supporting uh, Manza Illustrations. Uh, and all that good stuff keeps the lights on, keeps me having the time to do these episodes for you guys. So thank you for your support, mansillustrations.com. Uh, the link's in the, in the description, or just look me up. And with that out of the way, let's begin the Nico STA7070 receiver. Let's get the specifications for this little friend out of the way. At 43 watts per channel, it goes into eight ohms stereo. Uh, with a minimum of four ohms. The frequency response is 10 hertz to 50 hertz. Uh, crisp, clear sound uh, if you're driving the right speakers. Uh, if you're driving four ohms out of this with big, big speakers, you're gonna get a little more of a tinny sound right off the bat. We'll, we'll get into that, but I would suggest an eight ohm speaker. And it originally came out in 1978. It was a response to things like the Pioneer SX750 and uh, other silver face receivers of the time. Uh, this was Tokyo Japan's response and Nico is not a force to take lightly. It's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, people love Nico and uh, I, when looking and researching stuff for this video, I see people uh, online and forums asking about Nico, uh, giving love to Nico, you know, appreciating Nico and what, what it has to offer as far as uh, uh, the audio response in the audio realm for people who love this stuff, love the vintage silver face receivers. Um, th they're still asking uh, questions about it in my review in form of an episode uh, can maybe help you guys. This thing has been with me since the beginning, pretty much the beginning of my hi-fi journey. I had had um, one of those big Sony tower things that had like a tape deck, CD, and the, the receiver stacked. One of those plastic bulky 90s units. Not, wasn't a fan, but it came with the turntable. Uh, the person was selling it and so I just took them both just to hold me over until I could get myself one of these. And once I did, I you never go back. I haven't had one problem with this thing. The LED lights shine bright at night. Uh, it gives that ethereal glow. Uh, and I am just uh, enamored with it. I love the thing. In 1978, this originally retailed at $400. Um, and the conversion rate has actually gone down uh, in today's money. It's now available for somewhere around $300 uh, to pick up one of these. Uh, $100 to $300 price range for one of these. Um, I guess it's gone up. I got lucky when I got it because, you know, people say in my original video, my Hi-Fi Done Cheap video, if you haven't seen it, people are like, you know, a trade isn't free. A trade for me is you trade something of yours for a, an, an item that you need or want. Uh, basically, no money exchanged making it free. Some folks in the comments had a problem with me saying I got it free on a trade. Um, why that is, I'm not sure. When I've got albums and doubles of things that a person wanted, the, the previous owner of this wanted the pressings I had of certain albums. So I traded the albums for the receiver. No money exchanged, and in my mind, that was free. I already had the other albums uh, as doubles. No sweat off my nose, no harm, no foul. It was perfectly fine. And I am so grateful to that man. His name is Corey. He is great. I've reached out to him if I need something fixed in this because I'm not technically savvy in that department. I can't open this thing up and try to fix it. I can only admire and enjoy it from afar as I do in my listening sound space here. Uh, I can't fix the thing. So if there's something wrong with the Nico STA7070, I bring it to Corey. He can fix it right away and I'll pay him then 
for that. Say one of the LED lights is out on the on the tuner, you can fix it. The bonds that we make uh, when in this in this kind of hobby in this realm, and I, I'm happy for it. This big old solid state friend of mine is is nothing to take lightly. It's heavy. It's a heavy piece. It's got real walnut wood on the sides and top to kind of cage it in. The knobs from left to right include a low to high boost factor in which where you're listening, you can either boost the highs or silence the lows or vice versa, bring up the lows and mute the highs a little bit, muffle them. Uh, I never use that. I keep them both not on because I think that taints and paints the sound in a not flattering way. From left to right, we've got the bass knob, uh, brings up your bass low to high. I keep that in the middle. Um, and next we have the treble. I keep that also in the middle. When we get to a knob in the three up from here, you're gonna need to adjust that a little bit. The loudness button on this thing has a, has a severe curve, but we'll get into that. Next up we have the optional tape uh, deck where you can add a tape deck real quick while I'm on this part I've got um, in the back this this has two Ports for an auxiliary you could connect your Bluetooth speaker of choice your Amazon unit Whatever you've got to this as well as something else to stream music digitally uh, Auxiliary it's got two ports for two different turntables if you wanted uh, it's got two phono uh, ports for for two turntables. Pretty cool and unique for something that's over 40 years old now um, to have. But as we get back to it, you can attach a tape deck as well to this. So you can technically attach your CD player, Bluetooth speaker, tape deck, two different phono uh, turntables to this, and it's all fine. It would all run nicely. This thing barely even warms up, and I've got my Bluetooth speaker turntable and speakers hooked up to it. it. It gets warm, it warms up, but that's about the, the extent of it. We've got one and two tape options to switch from the tape decks that you've got plugged in. I don't opt for that. I don't use tapes. I don't listen to cassettes, so I don't need that. Up next, we had what I touched on a little bit before, the loudness option, the loudness toggle. Uh, when you are listening to anything with that, it severely brings up the bass and the treble uh, in a significant way. So what you want to maybe do is lower the bass and up the treble. That seems to create a severe curve in treble and bass. Uh, the treble, uh, you know, rounding itself out to being more mid-range treble. And the bass really coming up to add that mid-section to the treble and things get a little bit lost sometimes uh, although the bass is significantly boosted and it's it sounds amazing but it's a severe curve it's not something to really be concerned with or mess with uh, too much you can add an equalizer to this and, and you know have that a, a separate equalizer attached to the unit to maybe hone in and really get a great clean uh, curve to your equalization with your sound and music what you prefer but I use this loudness feature a lot I use it almost all the time I like how it sounds I like the curve and I like the warmth that that loudness option brings I don't listen to music at too loud a volume let's say the max volume three o'clock we'll say for this without being distorting to, to any of the factors in the sound, it, it kind of distorts out after 4 or 5 o'clock on that dial. Uh, I keep my music to around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock tops, at which point you'll need the loudness feature to really help have a, a really honed in, rounded sound, nice warm sound, crisp, uh, without it being too tinny. I, I find that at low volumes this receiver is tinny. Uh, without the loudness feature on uh, at low volumes. It needs a little bit of a bass boost, and that could be my Yamo uh, S808 speakers just need a subwoofer. Uh, you know, I've heard people say that it, these are nothing without a subwoofer. You need one. Um, I don't exactly think that. I, I don't necessarily think I need a subwoofer. I hear bass better than I ever have in recent years. Ran by the Nico 7070. Uh, these 
are, are fantastic, especially with the loudness switch in the on position. The loudness feature, just something to be aware of. It's a common feature in early 60s, 70s units. Uh, it's something that's cool at low, at low volumes to still pack a punch uh, while not losing any of the depth in the music. Coming in on the eighth switch down the line here, we got the volume and the balance. You could, you know, the balance, I never need it. I never use it. I guess if you have a speaker that's kind of crapping out, you don't want it to be really known. You could put it toward the other speaker that's good, uh, and you could balance that over to this side instead of this side, you know. But I, both of them are beautiful sounding, so I keep it right in the middle for the balance. And again, volume, I keep it at 9, 10 o'clock tops, th tops, 3 o'clock, no more than that, or it distorts the music. Up next is your selector, your selector uh, toggle here. You can select... Uh, anything from the tape deck, your phono stuff for turntable, your tape deck, your auxiliary, your tuner, AM, FM. And it's got a dubbing feature. If you wanted to record something to tape, you could do that too with this. Up next is the mono and stereo toggle. You can go between mono. Say you've got a mono record. Obviously, I switch it down to mono. And there's that cuckoo clock. Did you guys see my cuckoo uh, clock review? Um, go ahead and watch that if you haven't. But with that interruption, we've got the stereo and mono. So in my mind, somehow I think that it's like, it's true st stereo and true mono if it's on the right switch. So I'm not gonna listen to a stereo recording in the mono uh, because that's completely gonna um, narrow the sound completely and take it away from stereo. And vice versa, I'm not gonna listen to a mono recording in stereo because that's not how it's supposed to sound. So I switch it accordingly. And up next, we've got the FM muting. So if you just wanna cut the FM feed real quick, you just put the mute button on the FM. Uh, I guess that's that way you don't get any um, sort of ghosts ghosting sounds and, and masks that are underneath if you're say you're dubbing something and, and you can probably hear the radio signal under any of that it kind of kills that you could dampen that and, and it shut the fm completely off uh, but keep in mind if you want to play the radio the fm needs to be on and that brings me to the radio crisp clear loud sound obviously the bass is boosted significantly uh, that's just the radio wave is always that way with radio um, it sounds great. I don't know too much about AM, FM stereo responses, but it comes in crisp, it comes in clear, and the knob to get down here, this knob right here, like moves like nothing else. That feels high end to kind of circle down the dial there to get to your favorite station. I love that. On the far left over here, what I'm going to talk about, I forgot to mention, we've got a headphone jack. If you want to listen to your hi-fi in headphones, you got to do so, uh, and you can do so. You just need an adapter from your computer. Say your plugs right into your computer with one of those little, uh, little connectors. You need the bigger one. Like say, if you were plugging into an amp, uh, like a musician plugging into an amp with their cord, their cable, you need a, one of those larger adapters to fit onto your um, headphone jack at, at the end there. Uh, and otherwise, you're in good shape. Next up I forgot to mention is the speaker A, A, B, and just B. Uh, yeah, I just keep it on A because I've only got two, one set of speakers uh, plugged in here. But say I had two sets of speakers, which this also can accommodate for, uh, you have it on A and B. You can put it to A and B and say you just want a sub subwoofer plugged into this, you put it onto the B and you've got A and B for the subwoofer and the main stereo speakers. Um, and say you don't have a subwoofer, you just keep it on A, like I have. You're not missing anything as far as if you want a hi-fi sound, if you want something distinct and uh, period correct in that retro kind of vibe and, and wrapped in a retro bow, this gives you everything that you need. You're not missing a thing. And I love that, I love that. This is specifically catered to me and it fits right on this shelf in this unit I got from Target. Uh, and and that, that too adds something else to it. It just elevates the look and the experience that I have enjoying the Nico STA 7070. 
And although it is not a tube-based amp, it brings a certain warmth and clarity and crispness that I'm looking for. Sure, I can get a tube uh, amplifier, um, phono preamp uh, to add to this and to enhance the sound, bring a little more period correct warmth to the sound. But for now, I am more than happy with this solid state receiver. I highly recommend you seek out and get yourself one of those silver faces. Uh, they run pretty high. They're, they're anywhere from 300 to 500 in good shape. Uh, if you can strike a deal like I did, uh, more power to you. I wish you luck in finding your perfect uh, vintage hi-fi gem. I want to thank you folks for watching to the end of the episode. With that out of the way, you could find me lounging to a melody. Take care, folks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, folks, for tuning into this episode. If you do feel so inclined as to follow me on social media, you may gladly do so at Manza Media Art and Manza Media on every other platform. If you like prints, I've got an Etsy shop where you can see some of my original artwork and fan artwork. I'll catch you folks on the next episode of Manta Media.